Tonight I want to talk to you about first things first. First things first. And uh, I don't do a lot of topical messages, but this one is topical. Uh, we uh, don't have just one text in the supporting text, so get your Bible ready, get your fingers ready, and uh, we're going to talk about first things first. Father, thank you for this night, and God, I just thank you for just your many blessings. God, you are so good to us. God, I thank you for our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. And I thank you for our youth discipleship and, Lord, the kids outside just having a great time. Lord, it's just good to be in your house. And, God, I pray you be with us as we look at Scripture. God, I pray that it would just be a reminder of things in our own personal lives. And a lot of times when I read the Word, I, I, I need to make corrections. And it may be a small thing. But God, small things add up to big things. Uh, so God, I pray that you would just take this scripture. I pray that it permeate our hearts and our minds. And God, I just pray that uh, we would keep you first uh, in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This uh, title tonight is actually a song. And if you look on your sheet, if you've got a worksheet, uh, the group is called Consumed by Fire. Uh, Tony Smedley. Uh, read some of the lyrics this past Saturday night uh, when we were at prayer time, and uh, I've you know I've been listening to this song. It's one of my favorite songs, period, uh, on the radio right now. Uh, I, I listen to K Love, and uh, I'm not sure what 80, 88, whatever that one is too. Those are the two I bounce back from. But I want to encourage you to uh, Google this or find it online uh, and listen to it, and. Uh, you, you will be blessed by it. Make sure it's quiet. Make sure there's not any distractions. Uh, the words mean so much. So let's look at first things first. And I just jotted down three things. And folks, I could have we could have done five tonight real easy on first things first. But, you know, time and all the other issues. And I will assure you, I'll go more than 15 minutes, all right, tonight? <laughs> That's a joke, okay? <laughs> Number one. If you're going to keep first things first, you must put God first. Okay, I know that's so simple, it's not profound, but you must put God first. And God's Word says that. Look in Exodus chapter 20 with me. And we know this is the starting of the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were the laws given to God's people. All right, and we know the law doesn't save us. It's a plumb line. It tells us, what we should and should be doing. And the first four uh, commandments is about your relationship with God, your relationship with God. The next six are about your relationship with man or others. So you think about this, this is the first thing in, in, as far as laws uh, pinned in the Word of God on what we need to be doing and what we don't need to be doing. So look at uh, ver, uh, chapter one or chapter 20 verse 1 and God spoke all these words that alone should tell you we need to be doing this if God speaking the word we need to follow it I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage if folks we know the story I'm not going to go historically into what they did and the wandering and Kadesh Barney all these things going on Okay, they simply were disobeying God. And then it says, uh, you shall have no other gods before me. And of course, this is the first commandment. And you notice the, the capitalization in verse 1. God is capitalized. That's Jehovah God of this Bible. Okay, and there are many gods. Notice in verse 3, it's a small g. There's, I mean, in some cultures, there's a God of the sun, God of the moon. God of the wind, and all these, but only God, uh, the Jehovah of the Bible, we need to put first in our life. And when you think about some gods that we have uh, as Americans, the first one I think about is the God of money or materialism. Okay, you think about our society, all the ads that are online, on TV, and again, folks, it's not wrong to have money. But if you put money ahead of God, then you are breaking God's law. Sometimes it's our job. People are 
are just obsessed with their job. Sometimes it's a relationship, okay? Uh, and again, your relationship with God should be the first relationship uh, in your life. And then also hobbies. I talked to a guy in Alma one time. He, he loves to play golf. And I said, how much golf do you play a week? He said, just one round short of divorce. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm, I'm telling you, the guy, the guy played four or five times a week, which, again, I'm not saying that's wrong, but if we put that before God, and then the one that gets 90% of the people living and breathing today is the God of what I call social media. Let me get specific, your phones. I am telling you, there are people that cannot live without a phone. They're on their phones all the time. They're checking things all the time. They're online all the time. Again, I'm not trying to slam Facebook. I'm simply saying uh, you have to watch what you do. We can make social media our God. And you say, how, do you, how can I do that? Let me ask you this. How much time you spend with God in Bible study and prayer, and how much time are you on your phone in a day's time? Okay, add it up. And you will see, folks, I am telling you, to our culture right now, matter of fact, I saw a deal on the news last night that said, I think it was Channel 5, the two I, I bounced back and forth, but it says social media is hurting our children. Okay? They get online and they look and everybody on there is perfect. They're thin and all this stuff mentally. And folks, I think it's also hurting them spiritually. Okay, there's so much online. There's video games. There's so many things that can distract us. And I truly believe a lot of people do this. They do not put God first in their life. Look at verse 4. You shall not make for yourself any carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven or that is in earth or, or in the water, in the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, Visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations to those who hate me. And I've said this several times. What one generation will do in moder moderation, the next generation will do in excess. So there is the gods, what I call, of this world. Matthew 6. Go with me to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, okay? And folks, God is our master. He is a master. Matter of fact, capitalize master. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. It's a love-hate relationship. And here's what my interpretation of, we need to love God and we need to hate sin. We need to love God, and we need to hate sin. Any sin, anything we put before God is sin. And here, here's Jesus' words. You cannot serve God in mammon. mammon. You have to make a choice, folks. And I know we got to pay our bills. I know we have, you know, making money, it's not, it's not a sin to be rich. But there's warnings about and temptations when we have money and make that our God. Look at verse 33. Verse 33, here's Jesus. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Follow him. Follow his word. Obey him. Obey his words, and all these things shall be added unto you. Folks, we get mixed up in needs and wants in America. But my God, Philippians shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. I got news for you, folks. I'm a rich man, not because of my bank account or my savings account. I am a rich man because my father is holy. My father is the heavenly father. My father has given me eternal life. When I leave this place, I'm going to a perfect place. We are rich spiritually. And then one more, Luke 19, Luke 19, verse 9. 
19, verse 9. In the story, as you know it, is Zacchaeus. All right, Zacchaeus, you know, short guy up in a tree. Jesus says, come on down. I'm going to your house today. Y'all remember that song? That, that was a cool song you learned when you were kids. But let's pick, it, pick up in verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, to, uh, today salvation has come to, your, to this house, because he is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. So what does that mean? Folks, part of putting God first is looking and praying for souls. Okay, what did Jesus come to do? He came to seek and save those who are lost. What does the Bible tell us to do? We should follow Jesus. We should pray for the lost. We should be actively engaging the lost, and that's what the Word of God says. So we must put God first when we look at first things first. Second thing, you must surrender all. You must surrender all. And you know a lot of people take surrender as a negative word, but folks, I'm telling you in spiritual things, it's a good word. It's the right word, okay? The right word. Mark chapter 8. Mark 8, verse 34. And he had, went, then he called the people to himself with his disciples also, and he said unto them, this is Jesus' words, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So what does surrender mean? It means coming under the authority of God. What does surrender mean? Denying myself. It's not about me, folks. It's about God. It's about my relationship with God. We must surrender all, okay? We, we don't make deals with God. God doesn't make deals. If you'll do this, I'll do that. And I've even heard uh, some people pray that. You know, God, if you'll do this, I promise you, and you can fill in the blank. Folks, I am telling you, we must deny ourselves and take up our cross and and when he was getting the disciples, think about when he was calling the disciples out, what were the two words he used? Follow me. They didn't ask him, well, how much are you going to pay me? Or is this going to be rough? They didn't ask those questions. He simply said, follow me. And folks, surrendering all is following Jesus. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will for my sake and the gospel. There's that word again. Jesus said it. All right? Why are we here? Why didn't Jesus, when you get saved, just beam you on up to heaven? Because we've got a job to do. We are the lighthouse on the south side of Fort Smith. So let your light shine before men that, th that they may see our God and glorify God in heaven. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And folks, salvation is everything. Eternal life is everything. I, I, I just, you know, and again, you know, you don't, you don't hear a lot of sermons on hell anymore. But folks, people that die without Christ, that's exactly where they're going. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I'll focus. There have been many a person. What about the rich young ruler, folks? He, remember what he said? He told Jesus, I've done all these things. Man, I passed the test. And then he says, you've got to do one more thing. You've got to go sell all, your ha all that you have and come and follow me. And what does God's word say? I'm paraphrasing here. He walked away from God. Folks, I'm telling you, your money is not going to get you into heaven. You're not buying your way into heaven. Folks, you have to come by the blood of Jesus Christ. And many a person has sold their soul, all right, for material things. So we must surrender all. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. By the way, I looked it up today. I have not preached in 10 days, so I'm fired up tonight, all right? Matthew 23, verse 11. But he who is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Okay, what is surrendering? It's servanthood. Okay, Jesus 
and God is our master. I mean, we should wake up every day and ask God, God, where, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to witness to? We should even say this, God, give me a divine appointment. Let me share. It's not our job to save people, folks. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Our job is to share the gospel with others. For he, he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Has God ever humbled you? <laughs> Boy, he has me, folks. He has me. When we start thinking that we, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of what that shirt, shirt there's a shirt I, I, I've seen on some people. Oh, here's what it says. I'm God's favorite. I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure God doesn't have favorites. Okay? Folks, we can't look at ourselves. We can't give people our spiritual resume. We are servants of God. Even Jesus, what we read said he came to seek and to save that was lost, but he was a servant to all. Servant to all. Matter of fact, uh, if you think about uh, who exalts himself, be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And I've, I, you know, some people, they'll get in the mully grums in the Christian life and they'll just say, man, I'm just telling you, it's terrible. It's, it's just, I, I can't get a break about the time. And here's what I warn some people don't say this, don't make this statement. Well, what else could go wrong? Well, I'm telling you, you're, you're, if you're claiming that, then you're, you, you know, I'm not saying you're tempting God, but let me simply say, Satan hears that also, okay? He hears what we say. His demons can hear what we say. So be careful with what you say. We may get nothing in this life. We may be poor in this life, but I am telling you, when it's all said and done, we are rich and God is going to take care of us. So, matter of fact, you know, we, we sing this all the time. And, and I like it. It's, a, it's an invitation hymn. I surrender all. I surrender all. And we sing it. But my question is, not just do we sing it, do we live it? Are we living that song that we sing? I surrender all. So, first things first, you must put God first. You must surrender all. And number three, you must follow God's will. You must follow God's will. Look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Paul writes the, to the church, Finally then, brethren, I, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you have received us, how you ought to walk to please God. I am telling you, if you keep God first, you will please God. It just goes hand in hand. And what Christian doesn't want to please God? I mean, I would think that would be a goal in a Christian's life, is to please God. And really, folks, sometimes the biggest mistake we, we do is we're trying to please others. We're trying to make others happy. We're trying to be accepted by others. And folks, I'm telling you, people are not going to make you happy. People will let you down. They will let you, Christians will let you down. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of people that got hurt in churches. Folks, make it your goal to please God. For you know what commandments we gave to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, it's not just the Ten Commandments. We're in the New Testament now, okay? The law is a plumb line. We still, you know, we don't need to commit adultery. We don't need to murder. We don't need to lie. Those are still effective. But this is the law. God's laws is given to us, and we know through the Holy Spirit when we are doing something wrong. For this is the will of God. I hope you hear this. One word sanctification. Brother Mike, what's sanctification? The word literally means being set apart. What does that mean? We are not like the world. We are not like the world. We don't have to agree. Matter of fact, you know, I disagree with a lot of things that are going on in this world. 
I'll stay away from politics, but I'm simply saying there are a lot of things going on that God, I'm, I'm telling you, he does not ordain, he, he is not pleased with. We used to be a God-fearing nation. And what sanctification is, it's that process of getting sin out of our lives. Getting sin out of our lives. It's that process of getting closer to God. It's that process, which I've said just a few minutes ago, of pleasing God, listen to me, in all areas of our life. What I have found out with 43, 43 uh, years in the ministry, that most people have one thing that trips them up often. Okay, Through counseling, through listening, through observation, one thing. And you can say, well... Well, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Sanctification is very important. That is the will of God. And then he mentions that you should abstain from sexual immorality. We should. That each of you should uh, know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay? What is honor? It's honoring God. It's honoring others. It's respecting others. It's respecting God. It's respecting our bodies. Folks, all relationships are built on trust. You were saved because you put your faith and trust in God. We must keep that. Even in our relationship with our own family, we cannot lie to them. We have to be honest, okay? Not in passion of love like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of such, as we all forewarned you and testified, for God did not call us to uncleanliness, but unto holiness. What is sanctification? It's holiness. Holiness. Now, God is holy, capital H-O-L-Y, but he is asking us to be holy. And I'm telling you, it is God's will that you are holy. Another way we can find God's will for our lives is in the Word of God. The Word of God. Folks, we need to spend time with God. Another way we can find God's perfect will in our life is through prayer. Prayer. Because if we're in the Word, if we're praying, God, that's, that's how I know where to go and what to do, folks. God gives me peace through either Scripture or through prayer. He opens doors of opportunity, and He shuts doors. The Holy Spirit says, yes, it's okay, and the Holy Spirit also tells me, uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Here's my theory, folks. Here's what I believe with all my heart. When in doubt, do without. If you have to stop and think about it, if you think it might be wrong, I wouldn't get near it, folks. I wouldn't get near it. His will. Follow God's will. Sanctification is holiness. Now look at the last verse. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us the Holy Spirit. You know what Paul's saying? Man, you got the Holy Spirit inside of you. It shouldn't be hard. The bracelets that we have on, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Folks, if we'd do that, we'd be sanctified. If we just follow Jesus in everything, we would be sanctified and we would put first things first. Matthew 26, last scripture. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 39. And we know what's going on. Jesus took his disciples to pray in the garden. And he was about to be arrested in the garden. He knew his time was short. He knew this time uh, was going to be, uh, you know, the last time on earth with the three disciples and the disciples. He knew things were getting serious. And I'll pick it up in verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but is as you will. You know what I believe? 
and again, this is my opinion, he is not talking about, and I've heard it preached this, I don't think he's talking about the cup of suffering. Okay? If you think about it, Jesus suffered his whole life. He didn't have a place to lay his head. He slept outside. You just go through all the things. that you, He was called Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. Okay? All these things. I think the cup that he is talking about is God placing sin on him. He had never sinned. Folks, don't take that lightly. He felt what we felt. He was 100% God, but 100% man. And by the way, the reason he never sinned was because he put God first. Even though he, I understand the Trinity, I understand all that, but there was temptation all around him, folks. And at that point, he, it hit him in his last prayer in this garden, man, I am going to, the whole sin of the world, something that I have never felt in 33 years of my life. God, is there any other way? And folks, that will tell you the weight of sin. Sin will break up homes. Sin will hurt people. Sin will divide churches. Sin will cause someone to murder. Sin will cause adultery in lives. And he was taking all that on, but yet he made the statement, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what? Notice the exclamation point. Could you not watch with me one hour? And again, I don't think it was a thing of time. I don't think you have to pray an hour. You pray from the heart. You pray in the Spirit and it won't matter how long it is, all right? But words, I mean, he got, on, he got on the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, you want to pray? You want to pray in front of everybody? You want to pray long prayers? Folks, long prayers, they may not be effective prayers. You may be praying to people around you. When you pray, you are praying to God. Jesus asked him, listen, this is my life. This is tough. This is the worst thing I will go through. Okay, I will become sin for you. Could you not pray for me? Folks, you want to find God's will for your life? You have to spend time in prayer. And you know what we do as Christians? We poll everybody. Well, I got a job offer. Well, I got this. Well, I... And I'm not against people praying for you. But folks, it comes down not to, you know, the consensus of masses. It comes down to God, what do you want me to do? You tell me what to do and I'll do it. He said, watch and pray. Now listen to this. Lest you enter into temptation, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh, folks, there's one good thing about prayer that many people I don't even think, think about. When you are praying, you cannot think two thoughts at once. Okay? If you are focused on God, if you are in the Spirit and pray, when that temptation comes, and folks, the other thing, not just pray, and this works, folks, if temptation comes upon you and you have Scripture banked in your mind and in your heart, when you start quoting Scripture, Satan leaves you alone. If you want to bust the habit up, man, you memorize Scripture, and every time this sin, remember I said a lot of people trip over once, and every time it comes up, you start praying or you start quoting Scripture, and I am telling you, you will find God's will for your life. Prayer removes the temptation. God has a perfect will for everyone here. And folks, I pray that we understand that the thing that's most important about prayer is praying in the Spirit. No distraction. In the Spirit. So I want to ask you tonight, and again, please, go home, listen to this. There's copyright laws. I wanted to play it at the end of the, the service and things like that, but I just, go home, man, get your Bible hand, read a couple of verses or read a chapter, and then turn this 
song on and you listen to it and you meditate on it, first things first, keeping first things first. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you so much uh, that, man, you put these words in the Bible. you the one that ordained the Ten Commandments. Well, God, you, you, you know, told Jesus what to say while you were here on earth. All we're doing is quoting Jesus tonight. So God, I pray that we will put God first in everything. And even our children, our grandchildren, they're really not our own folks. They're yours. They're God. And God, I pray that we would just turn them over to you. Keep first things first. God, I pray that we surrender all in the Christian life, in the spiritual life. It's not a bad word to, dis- to surrender. It's coming under your authority. It's loving you with all of our heart, our souls, our bodies, and our minds. And God, I pray that everyone would walk in the Spirit and walk in God's perfect will. I know we're not perfect. I know we don't do. I don't do the right thing every time. But God, I pray that we would take sanctification seriously. God, I pray that we'd get as far from sin as we can. So God, we love you. We thank you. And God, just thank you for this song. This song, I I just know, touches people's hearts. And God, I pray that we would just listen to it. Maybe we need to go buy an album. I don't know. Whatever we need to do. God, I pray we will keep first things first. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.